In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the world. I bear witness that regardless to land or label or language, there is but one God. And I bear witness to Osiris, to Abraham, to Moses, to Jesus, and to Muhammad. Yes, to all of the great worthies who came in the great line of the divine. I greet you, my beloved and beautiful black brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Yes, As-salamu alaykum. Hotel. Uhuru. Free the land. Black laws for all black people. To our brother state representative David Richardson, to the local minister and representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Minister, and Brother Anthony X. And I spoke with Brother Minister Jamil Muhammad and Brother Conrad Muhammad just before coming here, the National Youth Representative, and Brother Jamil, the great representative in Baltimore. Yes, to Brother Minister Robert Muhammad, here from Chester, Pennsylvania. To Brother Minister William Muhammad, to Brother Reggie Bryant, to Brother Ron Hall, and to our great and beautiful and promising young brother, Brother Tyson Price. I am honored to have these moments to speak to you on such an important subject and such an important topic dealing with the government conspiracy to kill black men. I believe that William Strickland in the issue of Essence magazine gives us a keynote. Says we have survived the Middle Passage and we have survived slavery. We have survived the deadly arbitrariness of Jim Crow and hypocritical hatefulness of Northern discrimination. But now, as we enter the last decade of the 20th century, we face a danger more covert, more insidious, more threatening, and potentially more final, even than these, the apparently sly conspiracy to do away with black men as a troublesome presence in America. He goes on to say, mounting evidence suggests that a near majority of working age black men, 15 to 44, are alcoholics, are drug abusers, are in prison, are unemployed, or they are infected with the AIDS virus, are suffering from some other life-threatening condition, or are slated to die at the hands of other black men. We do not know with certainty when this devastation began to set in, he says, but as Jewel Taylor Gibbs of the University of California at Berkeley reveals in her landmark volume, Young, Black, and Male in America, an Endangered Species, more young black men die from homicide in one year than died in 10 years in Vietnam. Reporting on conditions a decade later, Newsweek magazine points out that black men are six times as likely as white men to be murder victims and that they finish last in practically every socioeconomic measure from infant mortality to life expectancy. In fact, the dying rate is so high among our young men today that the life expectancy of black people as a whole has been declining since the mid-1980s. Young black men compared with every 10 young white men will more likely die of violent, often self-inflicted deaths. Homicide, and now, even among us, suicide, yes. kill more yes. of our 15 to 24-year-olds than any other means. We are suffering, therefore, from a double-edged holocaust self-inflicted on the one hand and system administered on the other. Our young males in American inner cities, as Gibbs wrote last year in the Los Angeles Times, are, quote, endangered, constantly threatened with physical, psychological, or social annihilation. 
They have been miseducated by the educational system, mishandled by the criminal criminal justice system, I might add, mislabeled by the mental health system, and mistreated by the social welfare system. I bring you greetings from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who in my judgment is the boldest. In my judgment is the most brilliant. In my judgment is the most
It's written yeah. in metaphors and it's written with similes. And unless you understand the parable, the metaphor, the simile, or the symbol, you will go in the book of food and you will All come right. out an even bigger book. Okay. So the book says that there would be a people robbed and spoiled. Yes, Brother mentioned public enemy. I'm the voice that you hear right after play for play. Right. Uh, she watched Channel Zero. And just before Chuck D comes on with this is a dope jam. I'm the voice that you hear that said, have you forgot that when we were brought here, we were robbed of our
teaches us in the 12th chapter. There appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with the child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon, the book of Revelation says, stood before the woman who was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as it was born. And the woman brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her man child was caught up unto God and unto God's throne. Her man child was a joint to the throne with the God. Now let's cook a little bit and see if we can see what the government is planning and why the government is planning. Let's even go to Lazarus in the Bible. You remember Lazarus? The Bible teaches us in the parable of Lazarus that Lazarus had been dead for four days. Is that right? But before we take him to that stage, you remember he's the same Lazarus who was lying at the gate of the rich man, begging, Brother Ron, he was begging for the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. He wasn't doing what Brother Ron is talking about. He wasn't doing what Brother Ron is doing. That is Brother Ron, isn't it? No, Lazarus was lying at the gate of the rich man, begging for the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Well, he didn't even want what was on the table. He just wanted the damn crumbs.
he sent the dogs out and he had sores all over him. These two teachers, the great teachers among us, the master teachers, the divine teachers, God's men in our midst, Muhammad and Farrakhan, they teach us that the sores on Lazarus' body represented his sore, pitiful condition. Yes, it tells you that the rich man died, lost all of his wealth, and Lazarus was called symbolically where? The to the bosom of Abraham. Right. He went to the bosom of Abraham. And if you remember, the rich man, or I might substitute for the sake of clarity and understanding, the white man, the rich man said was condemned to hell. Where was he condemned? Hell. He was condemned to hell, so that makes him damn, right? That's, right? That's why all over the country I call him that one who has a conspiracy and a plot to kill us. I call him the goddamn white man.
is around. That's right. Like he is a sincere advisor. I guess the sociologists of that day would call it red or red crime.
yard touchdown. White man say, nigga, run 110 yards. <laughs> Jesus cried. Mary was weeping and Martha was 
been there for four days. They said he had been there so long until he was stinking in the crack. Come on. Say the stench was coming up from the decomposition of his body. All right. That it was once a strong body, once an upright body, once a body that was making right angles with the earth, forming right. perpendiculars with right. the earth. Come on. A body that had been raised from a dead level to a living yeah. perpendicular right. upright on the square. Come on. Right. But now he was in a grave. And he was in a shallow grave. So it said, Jesus, the black revolutionary Messiah, walked to the edge of the grave, burying Martha, threatening him on both sides. Uh -huh. And when you study ancient Egyptology or Kemetology, you will find out who Mary is and who Martha is and who Lazarus is and how that all comes out of Northeast Africa. Another subject for another time, but I had to put it on your mind. Some water 
on my dry parts. Let's determine. Yes. Abraham said to him, uh-uh. Wait, Jack. Go ahead. I can't do it. That's right. He said, well, if you won't send them to me, will you at least send them to my European, I mean, to my brothers? <laughs> he said, uh-uh. Can't come to you and he can't go to them. Abraham said, there's a separation here. Abraham said, there's a gulf between you, white man, and between the black man, between Lazarus. There's a separation, there's a gulf between the two of you. He can't come to you and you can't come to him. When you had him, you didn't do right by him. But now he's in the hands of God and he's in my care temporarily. So there's a separation here. Uh -huh. So God sent Abraham to bring about a separation. Mm, a separation between black Lazarus and the white rich man. Uh -huh. Now let me move on. As we move further here into the scripture, when we look at the scripture and how it parallels with the news, mm -hmm. we can see that when the program comes on City Under Sea, oh, yeah, when the program comes on Cops, right. when the late night news comes on, right. they always want to paint a picture that crime is synonymous with being black. Yeah. And that black young men are the only criminals in America. In America. When the criminal statistics show that whites actually have a higher crime rate than blacks do. Oh, yes, it does. But they don't show that. They show you cops and city under siege and the late night news and all of that to paint an image of us so that they can create what is called a mandate so that the public will cry out again. We need the National Guard, we need the Army to deal with our youth. Yes. Our youth are out of hand. We don't know what to do with them. Yes. No, you don't know what to do with them. Because you got a slave mind and a slave mentality. Right. If you want to counter that and turn it around, you've got to get in harmony and in tune with the times that we are living in. Right. These babies that have been produced, these young black men, and even the young black girls, this is a new black man. They ain't not afraid of mama and they ain't afraid of death. They don't like a weak mama and they don't like a weak dad. They don't like a buck dancing common daddy that will bend over and pull his pants down and give evil an opening. They don't like that at all. They don't like a preacher that's a weak preacher that's always boot licking and buck licking. They don't like weak politicians that are always compromising and always trying to rhyme and 
in our aspirations. They are the generation not just of hope, not just of faith, but they are the generation of change. They came not to hope, they came not to grow, but they came to change. They say they're not going along with what's been going on. They say status quo, no more. They say to the white man that you're going to either stop or drop. you 
Bishop Allen to go up in the balcony. Right. Ain't Brother Bethel right here? Yes, sir. Right. 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 But they started the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Right. And it was Bishop Henry McNeil Turner of the African Methodist Church that said, God is a black man. Yes, sir. And not only is God black, he said, but he's on the side of the oppressed. Oh, he ain't God. Elijah Muhammad gave it. 
him to us. He was Malcolm Little. He was a little man. And Muhammad made him a big man. He was rich. Full of God's power. Full of God's spirit. There wasn't nobody that could touch him. But the honorable Elijah Muhammad being the skillful minor that he is. The divine minor that he is. The divine farmer that he is. In the Islamic prayer, in the, the Muaddin calls the prayer, he says, Haya al Salah. Haya al Salah. And Haya al Falah. Haya means lie up. Fala comes from an Arabic root, falak, which means farmer. So you're not calling us to grow corn and peas and potatoes, but God is calling us to liven up to divine cultivation. And so we say, Haya al Falah. Haya al Salah. So Malcolm was called to divine cultivation by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He was a cheap hustler. He was a little pimp. He was a lover of white women. They helped get him in trouble. He was a misuser and abuser of black women. But that was not the nature of Malcolm X. The nature of Malcolm X was from God himself. And it took Elijah Muhammad to see the God in Malcolm. Yes. Everybody else had misused him and abused him all of his life. Yes. His father, the black man in his life who was the role model in his life. The government conspired and other white devils to kill Malcolm X's father, snatching from his life the great follower of the honorable Marcus Mosiah.
we got to get rid of them. That's right. So they killed Minister Malcolm. That's right. That's right. The United States government killed Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yes, he did. These hypocritical damn devils yes. killed our brother and now they give him a damn holiday. That's right. yeah. Killed Dr. King and now they'll name a damn street or an alley after him. Yes. We don't need a damn street or a damn alley or a holiday. We need Martin Luther King Jr. every day. We don't need right. Malcolm X Boulevard. We need Malcolm X. Listen. Their leadership, spokesmen, membership, and supporters 
and to encounter their propensity for violence and civil disorder. Our brother, Brother Ron, had already said he had another engagement. We were very honored to have you. Let's right. give our brother a hand. He has to give us another engagement. And to counter their propensity for violence and civil disorder, efforts of the various groups to consolidate their forces or to recruit new or youthful adherents or adherents must be frustrated. On March 4, 1968, the program was expanded from 23 to 41 field offices. How many now? 41. The letter expanding the program lists five long-range goals for the program. Number one, to prevent the coalition of militant black nationalist groups, which might be the first step toward a real Mau Mau movement in America. It's just what we're here. They don't want to see a coalition of us. They want to, don't want to see brothers and sisters who are Methodists and who are Baptists and Church of God in Christ and Catholic and Jehovah's Witness. They don't want to see Balalian Muslim, Sunni Muslim, Shiite Muslim, Nation of Islam Muslim. They don't want to see the politicians. They don't want to see the actors, the entertainers, the community activists, the youth. They don't want to see the men, the young and the old, the women, the young and the old. They don't want to see a coalition of us. That's right. They don't want to see us form a black united front. That's right. They don't want to see us form an African united front because they know that that definitely will stem the tide and counter the conspiracy. So it said that they, number one, want to stop that kind of African united front. Stop us from forming a black united front. That's got to be what we do. We have to do that. Do you know that winos have more sense than we do? That's right. The winos don't care nothing about no labels. All the wino want to know is what's the content? What's in the bottle? We get hung up on all of these labels and we stay divided and separated and estranged from each other and we give our enemy a position of advantage. Forget about the label. What's in the bottle? What's the Good evening. 
evening. Yeah. Oh, I want to talk about this devil talking about releasing our brother Nelson Mandela. Planet Earth is 
to prevent these groups and leaders from gaining respectability by discrediting them. Farrakhan is a racist. Farrakhan is a bigot. Farrakhan is a hater. Farrakhan is an anti-Semite. You a damn liar. There ain't none of those. Farrakhan is a liberator. Farrakhan is a lover of his people. Farrakhan is a reformer of his people. Farrakhan is shaped and molded and fashioned and prepared by God and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for this hour for the liberation and salvation of the black nation. That's Farrakhan. But they want you to believe that he is negative. Discredit the man. We have a saying that we should support whatever the enemy opposes and oppose whatever the enemy supports. Let's say it together. We should support whatever the enemy opposes and oppose whatever the enemy supports. And that's what we got to do. So they say they want to discredit our leaders. Discredit Mayor, Mayor Marion Beth. Discredit Sheriff Green. Discredit the mayor over in Atlantic City and then turn around and say we made some mistakes. It wasn't what we thought it was. Right. But now you've discredited him already. Discredit Uncle Tom, I mean Mayor Tom Bradley. Out in Los Angeles. Discredit Mayor No Good, Good for Nothing. Good for good. Slammed his face on 
the head of the car. Pe black people in the community heard it. The neighborhood is full of uh, so-called gang members and others who now love the Muslims, and many of them had joined the Muslims. Right. It came out in the paper, how the community and on the news, how the elders and others of the community were talking about how the Muslims were painting over the graffiti and they cleaned up all of the alleys and, and cleaned up the community. And as long as the young men from the Crips or the Bloods gang were selling drugs, the police never shot them. But as soon as they cleaned up and believed in God and Crips and Bloods, now bowing down, making their prayers before God every day, and they in unity together, and ambassadors to the other gang members, and pulling them in, and cleaning up the community, and looking after the elders, and all of that, say, now you attack them, now that they're clean, like they did in Washington, D.C., with the dope busters. They didn't jump on the dope dealers, and the dope dealers didn't have no problem with the Muslims. Once they saw how strong the Muslims were and saw the Muslims standing up, but the police came with their guns and then attacked the brothers and sisters, the brothers in Washington, D.C. So these beasts slammed the brother on the hood of the car, and the brothers came out. He went, they went for their guns, and the brothers called on our God. And the news said, we're not going into the facts because we're still fighting these cases. The brothers they say that the devils pulled, went for their guns and pulled their guns and the brothers took their guns. The <laughs> men took their guns. And so they took their guns in the fight and the struggle over the nine millimeter, the clip came out. And they claim, they claim, that the brother was clipping, trying to kill the beast. And the other beast came, rode up and started opening police, uh, uh, sheriff from everywhere, opening fire. And that gave this beast a chance to go for his backup gun. I always remember the beast has a backup gun. Sometimes another one in his hip pocket, another one here or here. And sometimes they have one that they have a coat on in the small of their back. Yes, sir. Along with, if the coat is on, the shoulder holster. And if they don't have a coat on, the side holster. And they pulled the gun, so they shot the brother in the hip and fell him. And then the curbside justice, because they were embarrassed went over him and stood over him point blank range and shot him in the head. But our God promised us for every one of the least of us, of us that he would take ten of their back. It's written in the scripture where it says that it would be better for you if you had not even been born. And if you were born, it would be better for you than if you had been born for harming one of the least of these these belong to God. These are God's anointed and his chosen ones. And it says, government, while you are conspiring to kill them, it would be better for you if you had been born with a millstone around your neck and drunk to the depths of the sea. So we pray to our God. We honor him. And we know that he will answer our prayer. And we say, just keep on watching the obituary column. Because we know What's going on? Yeah. 
It's a part of African tradition. Plus the 33rd chapter, the 66th chapter of the Holy Quran talks about the domestic life of Muhammad and puts it in the proper spiritual and divine perspective. But when Malcolm came out with that against the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you couldn't understand our feelings about that. So God gives you someone that you love. Right. Dr. King, and he waits 20 years and brings it full circle right back in your face. And when Ralph David Abernathy came out with the domestic life of Dr. King, then you could see, then you could understand that when an image is a good image, when it's a good role model, because we don't have many that the enemy has not destroyed, you want to keep that role model pure. You want to keep it intact. You want to keep it in clear focus with the spotlight on it so we can all pull up off of it and pull up from it until our legs get strong under us. And so they attempted to destroy the good role model of Dr. Martin Luther King. Now to Brother Mandela. It is my sincere belief that after 27 years of imprisonment, to release Mandela now, certainly I'm like Hugh Masakila and the others. I want to see Mandela, Nelson Mandela walking on the streets of Johannesburg with Winnie Mandela. Yes, arm in arm. Yes, I do. But I also know when you lift the ban on PAC, devil. When you lift the ban on ANC, devil. When you lift the ban on the other anti-apartheid movement. When you let Sisulu and Oliver Tambo and let them all come back home, when you release the political prisoners, I think it was Franz Fanon who said it. Fanon said that whenever the enemy gives you certain concessions, Fanon says know that the enemy is going to tighten the reins in many other areas. Yeah. This is a wise devil, yeah. a smart, crooked conceiver. Yeah. And so when he does that, he says, well, Mandela is 71 now. Tambo is an old man. Sisulu is an old man. They'll be dead in a little while. We need to know who the new revolutionaries are. Who are the new ones waiting in the wings? Who are the ones who don't believe in one man, one vote? Who are the ones that don't believe in a multiracial government? And I'm here to tell you, I don't believe in no damn one man, one vote in South Africa. I don't believe in a multiracial government in South Africa. And you make a fool of yourself if you believe in it. Babies casket, black babies have gone to the grave, a long procession of them. Our children, young black men, young black women, babies of ours have gone to their grave. Men, women, children, elders have gone to their grave. I remember the Sharpville massacre. Right, yeah, I remember yeah, so right, yeah, right, yeah. I remember the mass graves where they would just push us in the graves with bulldogs. bulldogs right, they right. cover us up. I remember the gold mines and the diamond mines yeah. where we lose our lives every day. We're losing lives there right now. Going miles underground so that the white man can stay in power and have riches. I remember all of that. And I say, hell no. No one man, one vote. You get 24 hours to get out. Once we gain our liberation, we take 24 hours in South Africa. Get out of town by Sunday. You don't get out of town by Sunday. You kill everything white.
Nigeria, when we take over a coup d'etat, we kill the leader and jail them and then kill them later. But what about Zimbabwe? Come on. Rhodesia, yes, sir. as it was, takes much. The USA takes notes from the USA. Mm -hmm. yes, the Union of South Africa on, takes notes from the United States, the United States of America. Yes, they do. Yes, they have to Bush has told the clerk, look, man, you look, you gotta stop this, man. You can't keep having a colored toilet and a colored a red bus and a green bus and a colored beach or a black, uh, a, 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 a Kaffir beach and, and a white beach and all of these passes. Let the niggas swim with the rest of the folks. <laughs> Let the niggas stay in the hotel with everybody else. Then we can lift the economic sanctions on you, which ain't really amounting to nothing, no way. And the others can lift their sanctions against you. Israel has always remained close to you. Right. All the others can come out in the open with you again. And it will put the whole world to sleep. Every win public opinion. Right. You'll do what we did with Jim Crow in America. Right. We took Jim Crow segregation and stopped our niggas from going to the back door. We put it so that our niggas could come in the front door. Yeah. We put a new garment on Jim Crow. We dressed Jim Crow up another way. And we made Jim Crow look different so that the niggas would think they were free. That's right. And I'm telling you, uh, FW, I'm telling you, boy, our niggas are in check. Uh, our niggas run for president. And our niggas can run for anything they want to run for. And if they don't run fast enough, we got something to make. <laughs> That's what you've got to do in South Africa. Make it look like you've dismantled apartheid. You're going to still be in power, the clerk. You're going to still control the land. But let them have what appears to be their freedom. And then sit down at the negotiating table with them. That's what we do with our niggas. And we just negotiate the hours away. And when we get through negotiating, we're still in power. Say, unless you do that, you're going to lose your country under revolution and guerrilla warfare because you won't know what they're doing and planning against you. Let them come out in the open. They're taking notes from America. America has put us to sleep, most of us, has lulled us to sleep. Integration came in and the black neighborhood closed down so we could go off and run and be with white folks. That's right. All of that's a part of the government conspiracy to destroy us. I just wanted to cover those points with you on Mandela. And now I want to say that as we look at the McCarran Act, as we look at the King Alfred Plan, as we look at the counterintelligence program of the FBI, as we look at the plot and the conspiracy now to move against our youth, move against our leaders, and in particular to move against our leader who speaks for us and to us, That's right. the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, he is the Malcolm X of our day. That's right. He is the Martin Luther King of our day. He is absolutely and beyond the shadow of a doubt, the Nkrumah, the Lumumba, the Amurka Cabral, the Queen Nzinga, the, the, the Kandasi, That's right. the Turner, the Vizi, all, the, all of them, the Garvey, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, all of the spirit of all of them rest in that man and on his shoulders. That's right. That's right. No other leader stands up as bold as he does for us and is uncompromising. on the underground brain.
your corporation, we grabbing the supervisor and throwing them off of the 21st floor. When you move on Farrakhan, he's killing everything white that ain't right that's in sight. We're not going to stand around snotting and crying. No, no. No, you going to wear some. You, since you came up with your black thing, you going to wear some black. That's right. Those of you who got a back to put black on your back. Go ahead, brother. We're not going out that way. No, sir. That's right. No, sir. We're not going to no damn concentration camp. No, sir. That's right. Oh, no. We're not going to concentration camps. And brothers, let us start working on our relationship with our sisters. That's right. That's part of countering the conspiracy. Let's stop misusing them and abusing them. Now let's give them honor and respect. And sister, you must respect yourself too. The white man has designed AIDS as a form of chemical, biological, and germ warfare. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go green monkey. Uh -huh. <laughs> a green monkey has AIDS is because he was with the monkey and gave the monkey AIDS. Sheep. That's right. They got a law on the books now that it's against the law to have intercourse with a sheep. I don't know what it was between the white man and them sheep. Stop it. We've been in Africa all these years, and the green monkey been there all this time, and we ain't had no AIDS. And Africa is a heterosexual society. Even white scholars say that it's not homosexual. That's right. But I see these nasty devils all over Africa. That's right. Yep. Dr. Walter Rodney talks about how they underdeveloped Africa. Yes, sir. Europe underdeveloped Africa. Dr. Chancellor Williams talks about the destruction of black civilization. Yes, they come in there knowing the condition that we're in, and they take our young sisters and, and give, pump them up with all kinds of diseases and give them a few dollars. Some of the old nasty devil men come in there and get our young boys and men, yeah. white men, uh -huh. and lay down with our young boys and young men in Africa and pump them up with all kind of diseases and then leave them. Africa has become their playground. Yeah. Don't say he won't give us AIDS to wipe us out. He gave the Indians blankets filled with smallpox to kill the Indians. talking about how all of a sudden they had the polio vaccination. Uh -huh. And then they found out that the polio vaccination contained a cancer-causing contaminant. Now cancer, which was almost unknown among us, there's a rise in cancer among uh -huh. black people. Uh -huh. That's right. Uh -huh. and Dick Gregory talked about the cancer-causing contaminant called SV40. That's right. Yeah. This is the devil that we're talking about. This devil intends to kill us by any means necessary. And you got to be willing to live and kill him by any means necessary. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, We want to close with seven harambees. Yes, sir. Dr. Maulana Karega, who gave us the Nguzo Saba and who gave us Kwanzaa, our black holiday. Harambe in Swahili means, let us all pull together. Yes. Harambe in Swahili means black man and black woman together. Harambe means black man and black man, black woman and black woman in unity and in strength. Harambe means us pulling together for self-determination and self-empowerment, self-education and self-economic development and a land base of our own, some of this good earth that we can call our own. Harambe means...